All right. Well, hello and welcome. Welcome, Antelo. Today is Thursday, which means that it is Vlog Day. And yes, yes, I'm so excited. I always, Vlog Day is just my favorite day. I get all excited to shoot video and I'm thinking about all the great stuff we're going to talk about and all the advocacy and all the shout outs and all the first impressions and all the beer and all the comments of the week and this, that, and the other. Like I said, I do have some first impressions. Uh, I have some beer. Of course, there's going to be some shout outs in there as well. There's a little advocacy at the top of the program as well as some very, very random stuff at the top of the program. Unfortunately, I don't have a retro vaping segment prepared this week, but I do have a review for things that never got reviews on just one of the weirdest mods of all time. So I'm excited about that, but we're going to get there when we get there. Let me get my vlog notes out. And look at that. They're already out. So looking at my vlog notes, um, my, the way my vlog notes work is over the course of the week, in between the last vlog and this vlog, I will jot down notes like from things I see on the internet or things that people email me or shout out requests and stuff like this. So it's all just kind of jumbly notes and stuff. And I don't ever remember writing this, but the first thing on my vlog notes, it just says my thumbnails. And I don't know exactly what that means. And I don't know if I'm talking about these thumbnails or the thumbnails that are on my videos. I don't know. I don't, I can't even recall, like recollect what that means. Evidently, I wanted to talk about my thumbnails. For some reason, I have no idea what's going on, but I wrote my thumbnails. Maybe later in the week, it'll come to me and I'll go, oh, okay, that's what I meant to talk about. But for now, you just get my thumbnails. One thing I wanted to go over real quick again, in case this is your first time joining us here on uh, Thursday for the vlog, my intro and outro music for my weekly review series, they're not bands. They're just royalty-free music tracks that I purchased online. They're stupid expensive, but the upside is that they don't have any sort of like uh, copyright strikes against them, so YouTube won't flag your videos. If you use, you know, popular music, which I would love to have Clutch be the intro and outro, I would love to use At The Gates again, I would love to use a lot of bands in my videos, but YouTube doesn't like that stuff, and YouTube has been going on a bit of a crazy bender tirade lately, like striking and flagging YouTube accounts, and it's really bizarre. There was a guy just the other day on the YouTube subreddit who was like, hey guys, I just opened my YouTube channel, I just uploaded my first video. Before the video even got 10 views, it got a copyright strike against it. My account has been locked. Uh, it had nothing copywritten in it. It was my own original animation artwork with my own music, and YouTube won't let me access my account. And there's been dozens and dozens of other YouTube accounts that have been getting locked or frozen or copyright strikes against them for using copywritten material, copywritten music and images and this, that, and the other. And that's why at the beginning of this vlog, I got rid of the whole uh, tiger thing that says over 18 and then the... I have to get rid of that. I don't want a copyright strike against my channel. That little intro part right there, the rated R thing with the kittens and then the intro thing, that's not my creation. That is from a movie. That is from Death Proof by Quentin Tarantino. And about two years ago, the Weinstein Company, who is the production company, I believe, that put out Death Proof, the Grindhouse movies, they flagged a bunch of my vlog videos for using that. And YouTube was like, mm -mm -mm, this is not good. And so I'm like, shit. So I got rid of it and everything was fine. And then later the Weinstein company for some reason dropped the strikes against my channel, like they got rid of the copyright strikes against my channel, so I started using it again. But now I see online there's all these YouTube channels that are getting dinged, they're getting strikes against their channel for using copywritten material, which rightfully so, you know what I mean? Copyrights exist for a reason. So in order to avoid that, I want my channel to be in as best possible standing as possible, if that makes any sense. In order to keep my channel on the up and up, I'm getting rid of that intro. 
I'm gonna just not even bother using it. I'm just gonna have my new metally banner, 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 vlog intro, and it's all gonna be well and good. And that went on a little bit longer than I wanted to. Also, thank you everybody for the feedback on the new logo that I am so pumped on. God, I love this logo. I love it. I'm totally using it. Um, People did have some feedback for me, which is great. I was like getting feedback, not just from regular people, but actual, uh, you know, designy people sort of reached out to me as well. In fact, there was one guy, where is he? Where are you, one guy? There was one guy who actually kind of made up uh, his own graphics. Yeah, uh, Mary, he was like, oh, look, I made this. And there's like a skull with devil heads and fire and a pentagram and it says grim green and i'm like i see this and i'm like what that is so effing cool and then i'm like uh it could be a little bit offensive there is a big pentagram in it i'm a metal guy i get it metal and satan and stuff like that but i don't want to uh offend anybody you know what i mean that's not what this channel is about i'm here to help people and help vapors and help smokers and so i don't want a giant freaking pentagram in the middle of it so he's like oh well you know we don't want to offend anybody maybe we can switch it up to this and then there's a V with the resistance symbol anyway he's been doing some pretty cool stuff so I wanted to give him a shout out and uh, it's 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 very cool I don't know if it's gonna be something I'm gonna use ever at some point would look really cool on a poster would look really cool possibly on like an iPhone case I don't know I love my new logo uh, and I'm gonna be po hopefully printing up some uh, t-shirts uh, there was a guy in San Diego who actually reached out to me via email who's like, I work for a screen printer, we could do this and we could do it awesome. And so I've been corresponding with him back and forth. And a lot of people were like, oh, I really like it. It's kind of, your new logo's kind of metal. And people were like, oh, it's kind of like uh, the green arrow. It's kind of a little comic booky. And someone was like, oh, it looks too Chinese. And then someone else was like, oh, it looks like the Power Rangers. And I'm like, eh, okay, I accept all of those, actually. I kind of wanted it to be a little bit more metally and modern and reflect my tastes more than just like a regular grimgreen.com font with like my cartoony head with the little e-cig that's really really old i mean i'm gonna continue to use those things but you know i wanted something new i wanted something fresh so um just a little bit of news before we get to the big giveaway is uh you'd contacted a bunch of people and a while ago you'd set out remember the starling remember like two or three weeks ago how i spent all that really boring time trying to get the starling all set up along with that balrog mod with that tank and i've been using it and i've been filling it up and i've been you know evaluating it it's what i do it's part of my job here on youtube is to evaluate things and you'd is canceling the starling so <laughs> there you go. Sorry. Remember, this was the one with the really clicky light up switch on the bottom. You is canceling this. It's done. It's gone. You're never going to buy a Starling, at least in this, you know, capacity of what it looked like, which is a shame because I thought it was pretty cool. It had a cool little logo on it and I liked the button on the bottom and it was pretty decent. But unfortunately, sorry. Sorry, Starling fans. Sorry, anybody who was looking forward to a Starling. Yud is just canceling them outright, which is a shame because it's, it's honestly a pretty cool little vape. Anyway, moving forward from that, let's just, before we get into what I've been vaping, let's just do the hashtag vlog day giveaway. So I have a giveaway that I'm going to do. All you have to do is post on social media. I'm going to check this hashtag real fast and make sure nobody's using it yet. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Nobody's using this hashtag right now. So on your social media, whether that's on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook, I want everybody over the course of the next week, we're going to cut it off, I guess, like uh, we're going to give it through the weekend. Okay. So the, 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 cutoff is Monday. So if today is, I don't even know the date. So if today is Thursday, February 4th, you can do it today, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. The cutoff is going to be Monday, February 8th. Okay. That's the last day for entries. And all I want you to do is take a picture of yourself vaping, drinking beer, sitting in your boxer shorts on the couch watching the vlog. I want my I want the vlog in the background or if you're at a shop, that's my favorite. Shops are my favorite. Watch the vlog, take a picture of 
whatever hand check you're vaping, whatever beer you're drinking, whatever food you're eating. I don't know. Do you watch the vlog and eat dinner at the same time? Whatever you're doing, if you're watching the vlog, just take a picture of it, post it on any social media. Oh, my lighting. My lighting just went wonky on me. Just went sideways on me. Does that still look okay? Fuck it. I'm going to leave it. Post it on any social media. Okay. Now that's actually way worse. Okay. I'm going to need to fix this. All right, so we're back to normal with the lighting. In fact, if you guys saw my lighting, you might even laugh at me. I'm just gonna take a picture of it right now just to show you what it looks like. And it looks so jankily thrown together. It's just, it's silly. It's, it's dumb lighting, but you know what? It works for me, but that's not what this is about. This is about the giveaway. So post a picture of yourself watching the vlog, doing whatever you do when you normally watch the vlog. You got a couple days till Monday the 8th to post it on social media, use the hashtag Grim Vape Vlog. Grim, G-R-I-M-M, -M, Vape Vlog. Grim Vape Vlog. That's going to be it. I'm going to go through this hashtag and I'm going to just pick a winner. I'm going to pick what I think is, uh, is cool and I'm giving away a whole bunch of stuff. So I got a box. I got a large priority mail box. And I'm going to show you a picture right now of what's in the box, but it's a whole bunch of stuff. Some of this came from different vendors. Some of these came from manufacturers. Some of this came from diff different people all over the place. So there's a coil master, the tab 521 ohm checker in there, the one that lets you fire it. Yeah, that's in there. There's 120 mils of Epiclouds juice. There's a 60 mil bottle of Cardo Crush and a 60 mil bottle of of uh, caramelized banana. There's a Grim Army branded Easy Dripper bottle. D Easy Dripper bottle. There's the new raffle tank from UWell, which we're going to be talking about today. There is a what else is in here? There's the Griffin tank from uh, Geek Vape. There's an Arctic Horizon V8 mini in there. There's the E-Leaf iStick 100 watt plus TC. There's the new Freemax tank in there, which we're going to be talking about. There's the Smoke uh, M80. That's the mini TFV4 and its own 80 watt mod. There is an Anarchist uh, wire uh, t-shirt. There's an Anarchist bandana. There's five packs of Anarchist wire ranging all of the gauges. There's some Anarchist cotton as well as two tubes of Squid Dude coils. Now, this is a fucking awesome monster giveaway and someone's going to win this. And all you have to do is watch the vlog and post on social media. Hey man, I'm watching Grimm's vlog, hashtag Grimm vlog day, or Hey man, I just took a picture of the vlog because all I want to do is enter this contest and I don't really watch the vlog because I want to make Grim Green cry. Seriously, it's going to be uh, so easy to enter on Monday. I'm going to be picking a winner and then on the following Thursday, the 11th, I'm going to be announcing said winner and then we're going to get this in the mail as soon as we possibly can so that whoever has it can just tear it open like Christmas and build with the wire, put on the t-shirt, put on the bandana, fill up the tank and just start vaping like a crazy person. In fact, the winner is required to do that in a picture. I want to see this person using all of the vape gear at the same time. But let's talk about real quick what I've been vaping and it's really only a couple things. So literally no surprises here, right? Boson RDA, Noisy Cricket with the Twisted Messes cap. I put a local vape sticker on here because I have local vape stickers. This is Lane Cove Mai. This is just a fantastic vape and I've been telling everybody in the world to buy a noisy cricket but you have to be careful with these noisy crickets man it's a hybrid connection on there so make sure your pin on your atomizer is nice and protruding there was some disturbing ish pictures I saw on Facebook and on Facebook I'm a member of no less than 400 maybe 500 vape groups on there so my news feed is ridiculous. I have the most entertaining news feed on Facebook of all time, I believe. And there was some group, I want to say it was Juice Junkie, Juice Junkie Vapors, Juice Junkies group on Facebook. I don't remember. Someone had posted something about a guy bought a noisy cricket. It was two MXJO batteries with the uh, indestructible RDA, 0.5 ohm single coil on it. He was vaping it in the shop. He's like, this is great. I'm going to buy this setup. Took, came back the next day and the thing was annihilated. Like, I don't know what happened there because I've 
kind of use that exact same setup. I don't know if his switch failed. I don't know what went on, but both the batteries just went atomic. They were like burned and fused to the inside of the mod. His atomizer was destroyed. He had all these burns on his hand. So just wow, be careful. But if you are careful, holy crap, this is a good vape. Just freaking delightful right there. And the other thing I've been vaping, I'm going to keep this to like two things. Now we're going to keep it to three things. The other thing I've been vaping, uh, Asmodus Minikin, which is really cool. It's just really reliable. I have this cranked up all the way to 120 watts, and I have the Sub-Zero RDA from Sub-Ohm Innovations on here. This is just a really cool RDA. I just really like using it. You do have to pop the top off, or at least I have to pop the top off to vape through it, because you can't quite kind of vape, can't quite drip through the middle. It's more like an RTA without the TA part. It's just, it's an atomizer with like Kennedy airflow. It's great. I've talked about it before, and I've also discovered that the Dot Mod Petri caps, someone on Instagram told me this, the Dot Mod Petri caps fit on here perfectly. And so I snapped this down on here, just like that, open up the airflow, and then I have a matchy matchy dot mod atomi or dot mod drip tip with the sub zero RDA with the uh, Asmodus minikin. This is Grim Cult's Rainbow Sherbet in the Dark, just a stellar vape. Oh my gosh. That is so freaking good. Um, like with all my vlogs, I'm going to try to post links to literally everything that I talk about, including what I've been vaping now. Last thing that I have been uh, vaping more recently and uh, I've been keeping up with, this. This is my retro vaping from like three weeks ago. This is the Snow Wolf Mini. It's got a J-Raps, Han Solo, and Carbonite wrap on it. This is filled with six milligram mass stellar mint. This is the... Uh, K Fun, you know, the original K Fun Mini, which I do have the V3, the K Fun, the newest K Fun. It's on its way to me. It should be delivered this week, and I'm really excited about it. I've been getting pumped up for it by doing all these mouth to lung vaping here. I feel like P. Bissardo vaping mouth to lung like this. The truth is, it's really really good and I like vaping mouth to lung occasionally I mean it's not gonna be my main thing all the time I do love really nice big airy drippers and just maybe that's just the SoCal you know sort of I don't know culture of clouds um culture of clouds I'm using that nobody take that I'm gonna go by cultureofclouds.com right now oh man oh no Okay, oh, no, I mean, oh man, it's already a website. No one can buy cultureofclouds.com. That's just a thing that I was gonna do, but now I'm not, so nobody pay attention to that. But like I was saying, the Southern California, it's that culture of clouds mentality, but uh, sitting here at my desk, listening to some rock and music and answering emails, uh, I like a good mouth to lung, I just do. So yeah, that's really all I've been, uh, that's all I've been vaping. So this is uh, a little bit of advocacy here. New Mexico, uh, so Heavy CG on Instagram uh, sent me this. It's a tax that's happening in New Mexico. So I'm gonna post a link in the description to the CASA page where it says, make a call to stop a dangerous vapor tax. So this is happening in New Mexico, United States. Uh, SB 77 would include vapor products in a 66% tax on tobacco products. This is what every freaking state is trying to do. This is what they're trying to do at a federal level. They're trying to say that this is tobacco. I don't get it. They're trying to say that this is tobacco. They're trying to officially on paper say that this is tobacco so that any future tobacco taxes can also be applied to vapor products. And it's not just the liquid. They're considering vapor products to be the batteries you use, the atomizer you use, the mod you use, the liquid you use, the wicks you use. All of that together, intended use, is going to be a vapor product, which is going to be 
a tobacco product, and that's ridiculous. And New Mexico's trying to tax them 66%. This is also a hike on all tobacco products, not defined as cigarettes, which includes other low-risk smoke-free products like snooze and disposables. Please note, engagement is limited to New Mexico residents living in district represented by a member of the Senate Public Affairs Committee. Please enter your zip code below to see if you are eligible. Calling out right now all the New Mexico vapors. Go to this site and check your zip code. And if you have a zip code that's eligible, let loose. Just let fly with the testimonies and with the uh, I'm strongly opposed to this respectfully. Just do it. Just get it done. If you're not in New Mexico, unfortunately, according to this, you're not going to be able to take place in this call to action. But absolutely, all you New Mexico vapors, do it. Let's get this done. So I got a great topic for a subject that I want to talk briefly about before we move into any beer shout outs or first impressions. Got an email from a guy named Jack. So Jack writes to me, and I'm going to zoom in on this because I have bad vision. Um, Jack writes to me and says, hey, Nick, my name is Jack. Hello, Jack. My name is Nick. My name is Jack, and yes, you can say that in the vlog if you would like to. And a few months ago, I was, di I was diagnosed with depression and anxiety disorder. I got on medication, and I still am on medication, but vaping really got me through it. Building coils and watching your reviews helped me a lot to clear my head. I didn't have the best gear, and with no job, I had to get the cheapest juice I could find. It's a company based out of Michigan called Vape Juice, J-O-O-S-E. And yes, it doesn't taste great, but at $7 for a 30 mil, I just couldn't pass it up. So a few days ago, I went into a new vape shop in town. I'm not going to name names. And was looking at the stuff when I happened to drip. I then received ridicule and harassment from the employees for having the juice I had and a cheap mod in RDA. I went home and it's been giving me anxiety ever since, especially since vaping really calms me down and now I can't stop thinking about it. So if you'd like to, in your next vlog, could you touch down on some vape shaming? It is a common problem. I've talked to other people about it and they've had similar experiences as well. With all the regulations and go with all of the regulations the government is trying to put on vaping as a whole, what juice and mod you have are kind of unimportant. The fact is that instead of giving each other shit about what gear we use, we should be standing as one and coming together to stop the FDA. Keep calm and keep on vaping. abso fucking lootly I agree with you. That's ridiculous. There's no call for that. I wish you would have told me the name of the shop because I would have just publicly drug them through the mud. I think that's a terrible thing to do. And I've been in vape shops and I've seen that happen as well. And people in vape shops need to remember that they are running a business, a consumer customer based business. It's not your special motorcycle club hangout room where you all sit around a table and you're listening to loud trance music and building your coils and doing vape tricks. Like I get it that that's fun, but that's not what a shop is is for a shop is for selling vaping stuff to customers and as far as the vape sh vape shaming goes that is uh that's i mean that's ridiculous it's the it's one of the dumbest things it just sticks in my craw so hard i can't even get the words out to describe how much it bothers me look we all vape what we can vape and afford what we can afford. It's something I've been saying since the beginning, since I started doing videos, vape what you can vape and afford what you can afford. I don't care if you're using a simple clone with a velocity clone and that's how you vape and that's what keeps you away from tobacco. Whatever you're using is the best product. Don't buy into this like, I need to buy a, you know, an $800 device in order to impress the guys that work at my local vape shop. Who the fuck are they? You don't have to impress anybody. As long as you're not smoking cigarettes, I don't care what you have. Like this, yeah, it's become a huge hobby for us. And there's all different sides of it. You know what I mean? There's people that compete in cloud comps, and that's their thing. And there's people who are builders, and that's their thing. And there's people who collect really high-end mods, and that's their thing. And they collect really high-end RDAs and tanks, and that's their thing. And then there's people on YouTube, and that's their thing. There's room for everybody in here. And so it just breaks my heart when someone would ridicule for somebody else 
for the device they're using saying it's not cool enough or it's not uh, you know fancy enough or it's not expensive enough that is just fucking ridiculous you should be ashamed of yourself everybody at the shop should be ashamed of yourself jack i uh I apologize. That's not how this is intended to go. So yeah, now that we got all that ranting and raving out of the way, let's go. Where is it this week? I think it's over there. I see it. Let's go to the beer section. All right, man. I am pumped to drink some beer right now. So the beer I have, I picked up... Uh, just recently, this last weekend, uh, Local Vape San Diego had the Builders Bowl, which was really, really cool. A lot of super talented builders show up. There was like a novice, you know, uh, category and then an expert category, and everybody had an hour to build their craziest builds that they could and there was a whole bunch of entries and then me and m turk and lord nimbus and squid uh squid dude nope i just said that because i'm wearing the hoodie me lord nimbus m turk and Dwayne, oh boy oc my bff we sat in the back and we deliberated and we looked at coils and we were taking macro shots and we were firing them and all this that and the other really really good times uh we did uh the top three you know, first, second, and third place for novice, uh, first, second, and third place for advanced, and it was really fun. I really, really hope local does that again. It's a really, really fun time. I At least I had a great time. I don't know if anybody else had a great time. I had a fantastic time. So one of the builder guys, Matt, he's like, hey, uh, you know, after it's all over, he's like, hey, you know, I didn't know if we were going to have a lot of time here, but I, I brought some beers for you and Dwayne, and I'm like, bro, that's awesome. Thank you. So we went out to his car and we were chatting it up and he got me some beer. And the first one I'm going to be drinking is this. So this is Garage Brewing Company out of Temecula, California. This is the Marshmallow Milk Stout, which doesn't that just sound good? Like something that you want to drink? The Marshmallow Milk Stout. It's only a 7.1% alcohol. So hopefully I won't be, you know, just annihilated at the end of it. This was uh, bottled about a month ago. We believe in making our fresh craft beer from only the finest ingredients. And guess what? It's really good too. I'm stoked. I'm stoked to try this out. Over there on the Beer Advocate site, it has an 89% rating, which is, I mean, that is a that is a top-notch, tasty, delicious beer. Let's read what one of the top raters had to say. Oh, crazy stuff. It's sweet and milky. It has an aftertaste like incinerated marshmallows. <laughs> is it just me or does incinerated marshmallows sound like the name of a band? Cocoa aroma, lovely pile of foam on the dark red-brown brew in a tall glass, long-lasting head, and a sudsy mouthfeel. Chocolate milk from the 22-ounce bottle per purchased at Barron's Market in San Diego. So I got my bottle opener. Thankfully, there's no cork on here. I'm really excited to try this beer. Marshmallow milk stout. Marshmallow milk stout. I'm going to be pouring it into a traditional style tulip glass. This is the Grim Army one, which unfortunately we are all out of stock on the website. We're scrambling to get some more, but uh, we might have to go with a different style cup instead of the tulip glasses. But uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Not a whole lot of head, but it is, it is pretty effervescent. The head's just kind of... Uh, wasting away to nothing it's just kind of gone there i'll have no problem ruby Roo, drinking through this like a man so matt thank you all my subscribers here's to you here's some uh, marshmallow milk stout sweet it is really sweet the marshmallow is definitely on the aftertaste i wouldn't say it's like incinerated marshmallows but it does have a very, like, roasted marshmallow. Like, not even roasted. Like, you know, there's two kinds of marshmallows that you roast. You There's the people that stick the marshmallow on their stick, and then they kind of just put it by the fire and spin it around a little bit and go, okay, ooh, that's close. I'm just going to eat it now. And it's like a warm marshmallow, and that's it. Like, it's not crusty or anything. And then there's other people who put it in the fire and then just let it, catch a blaze and then pull it out and like blow it out and then eat it 
It's like the first one. It's not incinerated. It's like a warm, warm marshmallow flavor. It is very, very creamy and milky. It's very, very nice. It's dark, but it's not like... It doesn't linger on your palate. It's a dark stout, but it's very, very clean. But I do get that uh, I do get that marshmallow flavor, which is really interesting. I don't know how they do that. It's good. Holy crap, Matt. You were right. This is freaking delicious. Now, I have no idea right now what would pair with this. Can't even, you know, Ronin probably, I was vaping, uh, earlier I was vaping the Ronin Dojo. That would have gone with it really well. You know what? I'm just going to go to my old Reliable. I'm going to go to Yig and we're going to call it good because that's a fruit menthol, that's a fruit, that's a menthol, that's a fruit, that's a fruit, that's a fruit, that's a mango, that's a fruit menthol. So... What are you going to do? The only like bakery-ish type flavor I have going right now with a milk stout for a marshmallow milk stout is uh, Yig from Grimcolt. Let's see how it goes. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Hot damn, that is a good pairing. That is a fan freaking fantastic pairing. Good job. Good job, Nick. Good job, Yig. I like it. I like it a lot. Man, I like that a lot. So that's awesome. Marshmallow Milk Stout. Thank you, Matt. Thank you for handing this to me so I can enjoy some Marshmallow Milk Stout during this vlog right here. I'll post a link in the description. If I can track down the Garage Brewing Company website, I'd be interested to kind of, you know, Brewing Company Marshmallow Milk Stout. I'd be interested to try some of their, uh, you know, other beers if the, i mean this one is really good you know what i mean it's like a juice vendor when you've never tried any of their stuff and you're and you like buy a bottle or you taste a bottle and you go wow this one flavor the first flavor i've tried is really good it instantly oh it's happening it's happening i'm gonna burp and that first juice you try or that first flavor you try it piques your interest and it makes you want to try the other flavors that's exactly how this is they have a blueberry cream ale what? Flatbread blueberry cream ale. They have a golden lager. They have a mango Hefeweizen. What? They have a mango Hefeweizen? They have one called the Tow Truck, which is a Belgian triple. An apricot wheat, a, a marshmallow stout, chocolate ghost pepper milk stout. No, no, no. I will never, never be trying that. So I'll post a link in the description to both Garage Brewing Company and the Beer Advocate site where you can check it out. But uh, awesome, Matt. This is fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much for this. I'm going to continue consuming this. And what we're going to do right now after beer is we're going to do some shout outs. It's shout out time. Oh, it's just, it's just delicious. So I have a couple just quick shout outs here uh, off the top. I want to give Martin and Matt from Spitfire Vapors in Delaware a quick shout out. We had been kind of talking back and forth about trying to get out there to their shop. I don't know why I grabbed a pair of scissors to wave around. That's the worst idea on earth about trying to maybe get out to their shop for, you know, some sort of uh, event at their shop. And uh, it's, I don't, I'm not sure it's going to happen just because of my silly travel schedule that's going on, but at the very least, I want to give Martin and Matt from Spitfire Vapors a huge old shout out. Just bump it right there. Thank you so much for being so, so kind to me. There's a couple shout out requests in my comments uh, recently. It's this guy Sammy wrote and says, uh, looking forward to the first impressions. Can I get a shout out? Ha ha ha. Well, yeah, Sammy, you know what? There you go. There's your shout out right there. Had another guy named Falcon Punch who just wrote, what's good, Nick? Shout me out. Okay, done. Don't know who you are, Falcon Punch. I hope you're not, you know, like some sort of neo-Nazi Trump supporter, uh, but what's good? Shout me out. There you go, Falcon Punch. I'm not, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say 
Trump supporter. This isn't a political uh, vlog. This is not a political channel. Whoever you want to support, remember to vote your hopes. Additionally, I want to give a huge, huge shout out to Mr. Battery Mooch. Now, Battery Mooch, if you're not familiar, I've talked about him a lot in the vlog. He is just an all-around sort of really great guy in the community. He spends his time, his free time, I'm assuming. He doesn't get paid for this, which he should. He is spending his free time testing batteries. He's been testing every battery, every 18650 rewrap that's come out, every 18650 that you can imagine. He has tested them all. I'm going to link in the description to his area, I guess, on ECF of all his battery tests, but he emails me every new battery test he does, and he recently tested the Cloud King. Cloud King, which they are saying is a 40 amp 3000 ma or milliamp hour 18650 which sounds a little too good to be true correct generally yeah that's the case so his bottom line on these batteries in my opinion this is an average 20 amp 2500 ma battery with a wildly exaggerated 40 amp rating at 20 amps down to 3.2 it delivers a bit less capacity than a samsung 25r and about 15 percent less than an lg hg2 this is what he does he runs battery tests he goes and he buys batteries okay and he tests them and posts the results and that is invaluable information so mooch you are uh just I don't even know. Fucking awesome. You're doing a, a great job, and I appreciate it. Bump that, Mooch. Just bump it right there. I don't even care. Thank you so much, Mooch. Um, let's move on to a couple other shout-outs. Uh, I got a shout-out here from January. Uh, April writes to me. It says, hey, Nick. My name is April, and my boyfriend Alex is a very dedicated fan of yours. Uh, from your beer segments to your first impressions, vaping has changed both of our lives in numerous positive ways. I was once a very avid smoker, and Alex used smokeless tobacco. We started vaping a little over two years ago and haven't turned back since. Alex's birthday is coming up on the 22nd of January. Sorry! just missed it and i was hoping that you could give him a quick shout out i want to personally thank you for everything you do in the vaping community let's keep on vaping absolutely april you are shouted out alex you are shouted out alex i hope you had just a fan freaking tastic birthday i apologize that uh i didn't get to that sooner and think my other i think my other shout out this week is already a birthday that has passed as well look i i'm doing my best here with the shout outs and i love doing shout outs for people and everybody 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 seems to end every email to me with and if it's not too much can i get a shout out like and so i'm like okay i'll i'll try you know I'll, and it goes into my four shout outs folder if people request a shout out i take it seriously these all these things get cataloged into my for the vlog shout outs folder so if you don't really need a shout out don't end your email don't say hey i have a tugboat mech mod and i'm wondering if the samsung 25r is any good by the way can i get a shout out like don't end your emails with by the way hey can i get a shout out if you don't really need or want a shout out because i get it's ridiculous it's up into like the 200 plus right now shout out requests i just have sitting in this folder and I go through on a weekly basis and I pick a couple out and sometimes as they come in I'll like flag them and be like this one's important this one's important and then they all go into a big folder so you know I'm trying my best if you have birthday shout outs stuff like that great shops I love shouting out shops I love shouting out great people in the community I just love it but try to get out of the habit of ending every ending emails that you send me um which i don't mind answering i get a fuck ton of emails and i absolutely read all of them and respond to like 98 percent of them don't just drop uh hey can i get a shout out uh at the end of your email because it's just gonna clutter up all of my shout out inbox okay cool 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 okay tara are you Tara? Okay, Tara wrote to me and said, 
Uh, hi, how's your microphone? Do you like knocking it over all the time? Yes, Tara, I do. I love knocking it over. In fact, it's like my favorite thing to do. Anyway, Tara writes to me and says, I'm emailing you because it's me, my fiance's birthday on the 28th of January. Oh, we just missed it. He is a really big fan of yours and really enjoys your vlog and Monday double feature. I personally don't vape, but I support him in what his choices are. If you could do a shout out for Mike on his birthday, it would mean a lot from both of us from the UK. Love, Tara. Absolutely, Tara and Mike, you are both shouted out. Of course, if you're a regular viewer of my blog, you know that this is one of my absolute favorite things of all time when someone vapes and their significant other uh, wife, husband, boyfriend, girlfriend, life partner, whatever, doesn't vape, but are still supportive of their person's, you know, vaping to get away from tobacco. That's just one of my favorite things of all time. So absolutely, Tara, you are shouted out, as well as Mike, you are both shouted out. Hope you had a really good birthday, Mike. I apologize for missing it. Let's do one more shout out. I'm just going to pick one here at random. Ooh, I'm gonna have to go to my, let's go to my, like, my second or third page here. Uh, Dennis, here we go. Dennis, this is back from October of last year. So, there you go. Um, he writes to me and says, hey Nick, my name is Dennis, and I would like to give a shout out to my local shop. I was almost a 20 year smoker. I tried quitting cold turkey, I tried the Sigalikes, and I tried a few other ideas, but none of them worked. One day I found 417 Vapor here in Springfield, Missouri, and the rest is history. Why did I say Missouri so weird? I said Missouri, like Missouri. And the rest is history. I would not have quit if it wasn't for the folks there. It's not just another give me your money and leave shop. They actually care about their customers and will do anything they can to make you succeed in getting off SIGs. They will give every customer very detailed instructions on how to maintain their devices and have so many flavors of house juice if you can't find something you like you aren't trying i've been a regular there for over a year now and i've graduated from vaping to quit vaping as a hobby building and modding i like it so much i actually work there part time now that's awesome helping all the new vapors i can to quit smoking so if you could give a shout out to the boss man doug the boss lady jesso and the rest of the crew andrew martin anthony and carissa that would be awesome love the videos keep up the great work absolutely dennis you are absolutely shouted out as is 417 vapor in springfield missouri additionally this long list of people doug boom jesso go Andrew, that's right, Martin, okay, Anthony, yes, and Carissa, absolutely. This was, of course, back on uh, October, so hopefully all of those people are still working there. Hopefully, you know, Andrew and Carissa didn't get into some huge argument in front of the customers and then Martin got fired. Like, that would be horrible to, like, relive that memory right now if you're watching the shout-out in the shop man how awkward would that be but anyway that's the i think that's going to wrap up my shout outs right now what i want to do after we do the shout outs we're going to get over to some first impressions Uh oh i'm using the google foo fingers actually this is the google foo fingers maybe this is the first impressions fingers hmm so we're going to have uh, a whole bunch of first impressions right now i actually have mostly tanks of first impressions. Everyone's going tank crazy. China is, why? If anybody can name that ringtone, I'll give you a dollar. I'll give you two dollars. I need to learn how to mute my phone when I start vlogging. So anyway, China is releasing like their third and fourth wave of sub -ohm tanks and everything is ceramic. Ceramic crazy. Everyone's going ceramic crazy, which, you know, it's not a bad vape. So the first thing uh, is this. I'm going to talk about this. So this comes to me. Oh, pardon me. This comes to me via Horizon Tech, and this is the Crixus. <laughs> I'm going to call it the Crixus ceramic tank. I posted a picture of it on Instagram not too long ago. I'll try to track down that picture and show it to you now. They say it's a coilless atomizer. That is false. There is a coil in there and it's a lot like the vape and donuts. Remember the vape and donuts? This is a lot like that. It's got a coil encased in ceramic in it and all you do is 
you you know you fill it up and vape it and then when you want to change the cotton you pull the coil head out you take the old cotton off you discard it you take a thin strip of cotton you wrap it around this like you know cylinder of ceramic you stick it back in and then you fill up your tank and you keep vaping it the vape on it is actually really nice but there is like on all ceramic tanks that i've come across so far there is a bit of a ramp up time even the one i got from freemax which i'm not going to be talking about this week even the one i got the ceramicus even the one from you know whatever vaporesso and this one they all have a little bit of a ramp up time in them this is uh on the Vapor Flask Classic, 0.33 ohms, 65.6 uh, watts. Let's turn it up. Let's just see if that helps get rid of the... Uh, let's going to turn it to 74 watts. 74 watts, so that's 4.9 volts, 0.33 ohms. Uh, this is the Crixus from Horizon Tech. absolutely does eliminates that ramp up time that was a really really fast ramp up time now the flavor that i get from this is incredibly clean that's the one thing i can say about a lot of these ceramic tanks is the flavor is just incredibly clean this is the mango sticky rice from craft vapory i've had it a bajillion gazillion times it tastes very very delicious in this tank it's pretty easy to re-wick. That's the first thing I did. I didn't even vape it default. I got it. I took apart the coil head. I discarded the first cotton. I put my new cotton on there. And there's a little bit of trial and error involved. You have to kind of get the right piece. And you have to peel off one of the pieces of cotton and then wrap it around there. And then you kind of prime it up you soak it a little bit with juice and then you stick it into this little chimney chamber and you can see this little chimney chamber right here has all these holes around it and past those holes you can see your little pieces of cotton sticking out and then that wicks it right to the ceramic round cylindrical heating element and it goes and you can dry fire this in between so when you pull off your cotton and you're putting you're switching flavors you just dry burn it i dry burned it red hot a couple of times you rewrap it on there, stick it back in, you're good, you're good to go, you're good to vape. Cranking up the wattage definitely, definitely helps up that ramp up time. I should have done that a long time ago. I wonder if I could go, I just want to go a little bit higher on this. I don't want to burn it, but I want to try like 78 watts. That's an even 5 volts. very 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 little ramp up time but the flavor is just nice and clean and pure if that makes any sense good so far i've so far i've really been enjoying this tank but like with all my first impressions i am going to spend a little bit more time with this tank at least another week of two week or two of it heavily vaping re-wicking vaping changing flavors and re-wicking because i kind of want to see like the longevity of these coils like yeah right now this ceramic heating element is rocking and rolling but in a week two weeks three weeks i don't know a month two months down the road how's it gonna hold up they basically are like this is it this is your heating element you don't have to buy any more coil heads all you're going to be doing is wrapping new cottons around it and vaping it and this should last you so i'm interested to see how much it lasts but as it stands right now it's a really nice vape so another tank I just got, you well finally came through with the raffle tank. And I know it's not called the raffle tank. It's called the raffle, raffle tank, raffle, raffle tank, raffle tank. It means a gust of wind. It's French for a gust of wind or a burst of wind. And I don't know exactly how to pronounce it. I think it's called the raffle tank. Anyway, it is pretty freaking cool. Now... I have only had this about a week. Um, I got it right after I shot the last vlog, so I've been using it for a couple days. It's top fill, and the top fill is really annoying and not very useful at all, especially if you're using glass dripper bottles. I even have problems with like my unicorn bottles, like this chubby gorilla one. I even have problems with these chubby gorilla bottles they're designed for vaping they have a really nice fine point on there 
I have trouble filling this tank with these chubby gorilla bottles. It's even really harder to fill it with a glass dripper bottle. The best way that I've found to fill it is bottom fill. You just unscrew the bottom and you go bleh and you squeeze your juice in there. You put it all back together. That's the best way I've found to uh, to vape it. So this is a 0.2 ohm coil. I have it set to 90 watts and you can just pull so hard on this. It's a lot like that Triforce trifecta tank. You can just tear into this. It pulls really hard. It is a super cloud chasing tank. Super cloud chasing tank. This is caramelized banana. I've been vaping this juice for I don't know how long, years and years now. It tastes like caramelized banana, but the flavor is not great, at least with the airflow wide open. And I've been experimenting with pulling it all the way down. See if I can do a mouth to lung right now. <coughs> Can't do mouth to lung, but I've been experimenting and the airflow clicks, which I love. That's one of my favorite things. It just clicks into place. It's like, you want to set it there? It's set there. It's clicked there. Now, click, 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 click. Full open. I'm going to go one, two down. So now we're just to a little diamond-sized hole, and the flavor's much better. The vape is warmer and denser. Denser, more dense, but it's still a really nice performer. Like, you can pull on this really hard, and it just performs. Never had a dry hit so far. What I think is most interesting about this tank is, let me get over to the UL site. So where's the UL site? Where is this? So this is uh, elementvape.com, has them in stock right now, 28 bucks, done. I mean, it's if I, it, I think this is a really good tank. Uh, obviously I'm gonna spend a little bit more time with it before I do a full review. A couple people already have full reviews and that's fine. I just got these, I went through that whole like, you well misplaced my packages and then they got sent to Burbank and then they finally arrived. I do have a couple to give away. I'm including one in my big grim vlog day giveaway and I have some more to give away as well. I'll probably just give them away on Instagram or Facebook, something like that. But anyway, 28 bucks. It's it's that's I mean, that's a that's a dirt cheap price, honestly, for this. The U well Rafla tank sub ohm TC tank. Features a five mil juice well capacity, juice well, I should say five mil tank, right? Dual massive airflow, patented, convenient, unified top fill method. They just should just call it the pain in the ass top fill method. But here's what I think is funny. Patented anti spit back structure, false. This tank spits back into my mouth like freaking crazy and I'm using this is a 70 30 VG PG blend so it's high on the VG and it still spits back in my mouth like like a crazy person you get a nice misting of juice in your mouth and then you get oh you can like lick your lip afterwards and you can still taste that flavoring on your lip it spits back like crazy. I don't know why they say it has patented anti-spitback structure. No, you well, no, this is not patented spitback structure. Anyway, I'm gonna spend some more time with this, but there's a review definitely coming up very, very soon for this tank. You know, sub ohm tanks, it's one of those you don't, unless you're really testing out the like the longevity of the coil head, you don't need to spend maybe a whole lot of time with them. You can kind of get the gist of them, how they vape, how long the coil heads last, and you know, two or three weeks. So expect a video for this soon. I'm gonna use the hell out of this, so expect a video soon. So to break up the monotony of my first impressions and all the tanks, what I'm gonna do is a first impression for this DNA 200 I just got. This is without a doubt like the nicest, DNA 200 that I've ever got. In fact, I'm going to cut this clip out and release it as its own first impressions for this device just because it's so cool. This comes from Axis Vapes. So before I show you the mod, a lot of you may have already clicked over to Axis Vapes right now, but I wanna read you something that I thought was really interesting. Where did it go? 
What the heck, Nick? Axis Vapes packages their stuff all really nice. It came in a wooden box and you slide it open and there's a t-shirt on the inside and then you see your mod in foam and then there's like a little sleeve, a little envelope insert that has some stickers in it and it has some information on your mod. It has a certificate of authenticity in it. They really make you feel like you just purchased a really high-end device. So Axis Vapes, this is... This is fantastic, I just wanna read you this real fast. Axis Vape was founded to provide what the market was missing, a high-end, affordable mod with the features you've come to expect from a premium product. We loved the lifestyle, but hated replacing our mods every few months, and we were tired of overseas companies controlling the supply and quality. We felt like we were we felt like we were paying to be beta testers of subpar products. Yes. Yes, I still feel like that sometimes. Of course, there were high-end mods out there, but access to them was limited. If you weren't on the right social media pages or on the right email lists at the right time, you'd miss out on the limited release. They ha there had to be a better way. We knew we could manufacture high-quality products, make them in the United States, and actually deliver on our promises to our customers. When you purchase a mod from us, you know that the you know that is the exact serial numbered unit you will receive. Please enjoy your new handcrafted mod and thank you for choosing Axis Vapes. So I was talking to the owner of Axis Vapes, Win, via email, super nice guy, and we were kind of going back and forth a little bit talking about like the high-end modding community. Earlier I said there's a lot of people that collect high-end mods. Yes, they do. And they're in super secret Facebook groups and they're in super secret email lists. And if you're not, on the right list at the right time to get entered into the raffle to win a ticket to possibly purchase this $600, $700 stabilized wood mod, then you don't, then that's it. You miss out. They're not readily available. And it's like this really super insider collector thing. And if you've ever seen, like I see on Instagram all the time, Drip Club, which is a great Instagram, and Vape Porn, which is a great Instagram, they're always posting these really high end hemo stab wood sort of mods. And I, every time time I see one I go that looks really cool and as soon as I see it I know in my head I'm like I'll never get one of those and it's not that I feel like they're too expensive because they are really nice mods and they are really expensive but you're just not on the right list and you don't know the right people to get into the right Facebook groups or follow the correct you know secret Instagram account to get on the list and then sometimes you have to take part in a raffle and if your number gets chosen then you get the chance to buy a mod and they do really super limited runs. Axis Vapes, now this isn't something that's in stock all the time but all you have to do is follow their Instagram. Let me get to their website. Where did they lose their website? All you have to do is follow their Instagram and they tell you we're releasing 35 mods on this date, buy them up. And then a month later, they're like, we're releasing 60 mods on this date and they'll be for sale and you can buy them. So what they do is they make this. This is the M17. This mod is just, ha, it's just beautiful. So this is stabilized wood. So stabilized, stabilized wood goes through a chemical process and a dyeing process, like, you know, staining, not dyeing like, Ugh, dying like Kurt Cobain dying too soon dying with color and it goes through this chemical process to make the wood much more stable that's why I call it stabilized wood so there's not going to be any chipping or splinters it can hold up to being fabricated and smoothed and shaped much better than just if you took a log that was going to be in your fireplace and tried to make a mod out of it. This is stabilized wood. It's gone through the chemical process of becoming a stabilized wood. They have single dye ones, they have double dye colors, and they have wood acrylic combos. And the one on their front page of Axis Vapes, the brown wood with the blue acrylic, I love that mod it looks like the beach and i want to vape that i want to hold that in my hand this one is mostly green dark green light green there's a couple of uh you know wood textures in here that end up looking a little bit yellowish i'm gonna zoom in on this because you guys got to see this wood so this is the axis vapes m17 right here you can see it's full 
metal display right there with your DNA 20 and then there's your or your DNA 20 your DNA 200 nice big clicky my tech clicky little BB buttons right here USB for charging this is a lipo pack uh, device charging and interfacing with the eScribe software but look at this wood look at that that is freaking beautiful that is just amazing like it just looks so freaking nice. Let me take this off of here and we're going to talk about this RDA in a second as well. Look at that big spring loaded 510 on there. It's a 22 millimeter diameter right there and it's kind of sloped. It goes from smaller to bigger here and it's rounded on this side and it's rounded along this side to kind of fit into your hand and you can hit this with your thumb or fit into your palm and you can hit this with your finger. I'm a finger guy. I like to finger my mods <laughs> sorry really bad joke I like to finger my mods so this makes perfect sense for me to hold it like this and finger it big spring loaded 510 some venting holes there on the bottom and this is a lipo pack it's a 12 watt hour lipo pack but I just want you guys to look at this wood appreciate this wood I like the textures in it it's just it's just, I mean, it's truly and honestly beautiful, in my opinion. Stamped on the bottom right there. Not sure that's going to show up. That's the Axis Vapes logo kind of stamped on there. I have number 106, if you can see that. There's those vent holes again. But damn, look at that. Look at that. So yeah, the M17, it's just beautiful to look at. It's beautiful to hold. It's really light. It's lighter than you think it would be. It feels somewhat substantial uh, around the metal display and kind of around the base here but it feels I don't know a little bit lighter I guess I was expecting it to be heavier but it does feel really really light and that my tech switch on there is obviously one of the best it's my favorite switches on there now my velocity guy came through this isn't a velocity though it's a velocity clone I'm 99% sure that it's a clone but put a uh, M Turk build on there. That's an alien. I don't know the specs of this build. What are the specs of this build? It's an M Turk alien uh, 36 gauge over 28 gauge with a triple 28 gauge core. It's all twisted messes niachrome 80 and it's 0.16 ohms, he says. And look at that 0.14. He was really close, right on the money. But the vape that I'm getting from this is just stellar, and I know a lot of that has to do with the RDA, but part of it is loving the mod that you're using. This is just something that I want to use. This will obviously never get retired until, you know, whatever, if the DNA 500 comes out someday and I feel like I need a DNA 500. 12 watt hour? battery lipo pack so interested to see how long the battery life is on this i already hit my microphone again i already switched it in the eScribe software to show me my battery percentage i've been using it for a good hour or so already like this literally just came in today i've been using it for about an hour it's down to 96 percent i've been having this at around 96 watts with this 0.14 ohm build on here it's joyous. It's just joyous to use and to hold. So I'm gonna post a post post. I'm gonna post a link in the description to the Axis Vapes website where you can check out all about the mod, all about their branding, and you can see why they do what they do, and you can look at the M17 and all the different stabilized woods it comes in. But let's go, let's go to the show, let's go to the mod. I'm gonna click on mod so you can kind of see it. So it says the M17. Uh, is a DNA 200 stabilized wood mods that started Axis Vapes. We build each one with the best components we can source and hand assemble them in our shop in Fort Wayne, Indiana. So the single die, the single die stabilized wood, so a single color stabilized wood DNA 200 mod is 350. And it starts at 350 and goes up from there, which in the world of high-end mods isn't, believe it or not, isn't ridiculous the melody boxes were more expensive than that the zeros remember when everybody was vaping zeros all i remember is being at a vape meet hanging out with the plumes of hazard and they all had fucking zero mods these dna 40 c-frame sleeved mods that they all spent like you know 
$500 on and uh, they're using tanks with like insanely tight airflow. 350 in the world of really high-end mods is actually pretty reasonable. The double die is 375 and the wood acrylic, the stabilized wood acrylic combo is 425. Obviously that's the most expensive one is 425. So I'm gonna spend my time with this mod. I really, really think it's beautiful. I love using it. I really like the clicky button on it. It gives me plenty of power. You know what I mean? It's a DNA 200 on the inside. 12 watt hour battery, so not a crazy amount of battery life. It's only 1100 milliamp hour battery, but it's a 12 watt hour battery. So I'm interested to see how long that lasts as well. And I really want to put this thing through its paces. I want to use it. You know what I mean? I need to decide when I do my full video, would I be willing to spend $350 on this device? Would I? Would I? I don't know. So yeah, I'm gonna spend a lot more time with this uh, M17 from Axis Vapes, but I could not be more excited. It came in and I just, I was so busy today, I didn't even get to use it until about an hour ago. It came in and I'm like, okay, I need to charge the battery. So I plugged it into the charger, I started doing this, that, and the other, I'm rebuilding, and then I'm like, oh, it's getting to be like four o'clock and I haven't eaten lunch yet, so I have to eat lunch. And then, oh, I'm getting a phone call, and oh, I'm getting a text message, and now I need to reply to this person and this person about the magazine cover and about this and about that and all this other businessy stuff going on. And I finally, I'm like, all right, it's time to get all my stuff together, I gotta start shooting the vlog, and I realized this has been fully charged now for a while, still haven't vaped it, so forgive me if I'm gushing a little bit, but this is the first time I've really got to hold it and sort of caress it and love it, nuzzle it. It's really the first time I've got to vape on it all day, so I'm gonna have a toot and we're gonna move on to our next first impression. Good, it's good, it's good, it's good, it's good. And it is the M17 from Axis Vapes. And like I said, I'll have links in the description to both their website and their Instagram so you can follow them and see when the releases are happening. But moving forward from that, let's not do another tank. I don't really want to do another tank. I want to do an atomizer. And this atomizer I have right now, there's it's already out there. There's already reviews for it. I just got it. My good buddy Devin, uh, Mr. Ginger Vapes over there on the Instagram. He works for Karmic Vapor. And he's like, hey, have you tried the Magma Reborn? And I was like, no, I haven't tried it. Is it any good? He's like, I'm going to send you one so you can see if it's any good. My, uh, my opinion on this, not very high. Bummer. Which is such a bummer. It's built so well. The quality of it is unbelievable. I mean, it's a really nicely put together RDA. The deck on it is just fantastic. Big two post deck, Kennedy style airflow right in through the bottom and up. Kind of everything that I love about the Sub-Zero deck is in this same deck. It's 24 millimeters around and it uses its own proprietary sized chuff cap on top. This is actually a squid dude build in here. It's very similar to the one I was using from M Turk. It's a uh, alien anarchist or niachrome, twisted messes niachrome. Anyway, it came out to 0.08. So I decided to rock it on my Titan mod. I'm like, look at that. This fits on here and it looks cool on a box mod. The one thing that really bums me out about this RDA, the airflow. The airflow is just dildos. It's terrible. Great performance, really nice flavor. But did you hear that? It sounded like a jet engine. It sounded like a space shuttle ready for launch. It's just so freaking loud. I feel like someone's yelling at me every time I take a toot on this Magma Reborn. I just feel like someone's just waiting, like maybe a little man right here, just a little, a little wee man standing right here, and he's just staring at me silently. And I'm like, I'm looking at him and I'm going, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? I'm just, I'm just vaping. I'm just shooting a video. Why are you doing that? And then I go to take a drag and he gets all excited. And I'm like, why are you getting so excited? And then I take a drag and he just screams at me at the top of his lungs. That's what this reminds me of. I don't know why I made that analogy, but that's what this reminds me of. I feel like I'm getting yelled at. So I've been fiddling around with this a little bit, and 
Bro, everything about this is nice. The deck is nice. It uses Phillips head screws. The airflow is perfect. Nice, deep juice well. You can get your wicks all nice and in there, and it's great. Ah, but that damn airflow. So, like I said, I've been experimenting around, and it's a little bit better if you completely take off that airflow control band. So there's some spots for different airflows on there, and if you take that off completely, it's a little, a little bit quieter. Let me make sure this is juiced up. I'm using a... Uh, what is this? Dynamite Fuse. So this is a 60-40 VGPG blend. Strawberry apple peach. It's just delicious. I do like taking this top off, painting your coils, and popping this top back on. It sits on there nice. I would barely get any sort of leak back or drips or anything happening. And it's nice and comfortable in your mouth. It's not too big. There's some chuff caps nowadays that are basically the diameter of the RDA. This one... Nice and narrow, very comfortable in the mouth. Now, if you take that airflow control ring off, it looks dumber now. I mean, let's be honest. It looks way dumber right now, but it mellows it out just a little bit. You don't have to have the little wee man screaming in your face when you take a drag. You can still hear it. There's still an audible sound happening. More so out of this side, but you know what, magma, uh, it's like I've heard a lot of people say, you just need to bevel those airflow holes and make them a little bit wider. You have this huge hole on the inside of the deck that is wider than the airflow is wide on the outside. So it's going from a small chamber to a big chamber. Widen that outside, round them out. You need to bevel those so they don't scream at you when you're vaping. Otherwise, if it didn't have, if it had a wider airflow and it didn't scream at me when I vaped, this would be a really, really cool little atomizer. But ugh, as it stands, I don't enjoy using it. I see it sitting on my desk and I go, ah, I don't want to vape you. Ah, okay, I'll give you another chance. And I grab it and then it screams at me again. But I don't know if this is going to get a full review. This was, uh, like I said, sent to me from Devin uh, over there at Karmic. And I believe he just wanted me to try it out. If he is requesting a full review, if he demands a full review, then you know what? Fucking A, I'll give him a full review. But otherwise, I'm just going to leave well enough alone. I'm probably going to vape this until the coils get gunky. I'm probably going to disassemble it um, and then just give it away to somebody who wants it. I don't think I'm going to vape very much on this Magma Reborn RDA, unfortunately. One more time. Can we hear it one more time, Nick? Wowie, wow, 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 wow. So let's do, let's wrap up these first impressions. Let's do my last first impression. It's for this tank. Now this came to me from EH Pro. So everyone was telling me I needed a Cirrus tank. You need a Cirrus tank. You need a Cirrus tank. So I'm like, fuck, okay. I went and bought a Cirrus tank from eSiggity and they uh, threw in a EH Pro Bachelor tank, which I am actually enjoying way more than the Cirrus tank. Now I've been having wicking issues with the Cirrus tank. I'm going to be completely honest with you. It was not as easy to wick as the Griffin, and it either floods or I can't get constant dry hits. I can't get the right diameter of coil to wick ratio. If you have a Cirrus tank, let me know in the comments what build you put on it, especially which diameter your coil is, you know, what you're wrapping around, because I... I did like a 2.5 and I packed it full and then that's when I got dry hits and so I pulled those wicks out and I built it with a another 2.5 and then I packed it full of cotton or no, 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 I used less cotton and I just tucked them in. I tucked the tips into that little juice flow chambers and that's when it started flooding on me. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Um, additionally, I don't know what I'm doing wrong with my Mew tank either. I got a Mew tank in the mail, and unfortunately, it's all disassembled right now. I had to pull the build off of it and pull the wicks out of it because I don't think I used enough wick. It was vaping like a champ, like a fucking rock star. I put a photo on Instagram. I'm like, dude, this thing hits 
awesome and it pulls hard. But five minutes later, I look over and there's just a nice pool of juice around my Relo and my tank is lowered and I'm like, oh man, that's just the worst thing that you can see when you're a vapor is you look over and you see like your empty tank and juice everywhere and you go, fuck, and then you have to rebuild it and all this, that, and the other. So I'm experimenting with building and wicking that. Additionally, I'm experimenting with building and wicking the Cirrus, but this... Well, this has been all right. Now, it has a really, really strange deck. You have to build long coils, and then your leads go down into two holds, and then there's screws that hold your leads in place. And then you wick it through the middle, drape your wicks over the side, put the chimney on, and vape it. It's got stiff-ish airflow. It reminds me of the Praxis. Yeah, it's got like the exact same airflow as the Praxis Spitfire, which I do really like. So it's a little on the tighter side. It's more of like a flavor tank. Even wide open, it's a little bit on the tighter side, but it's got that same turn off your juice flow, open the top, like the TFV4, bleh, pour your juice in there, close the top like a TFV4, reopen your juice flow which are big juice flow like pill shaped holes and just vape it it's been vaping so freaking good um i wish i could change out the o-rings on here they're bright blue o-rings which is fine but i don't have any i mean that would work on that mod i guess that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna switch it over to this mod so it's matchy matchy with the minikin i'm gonna put that sub zero on this, I don't want to put that sub zero. I don't know. It's going to go somewhere. It's going to go on something else. I don't know. I don't have to decide right now. There's no one forcing me to decide right now, unless you are. But yeah, this tank has been really nice. It's got a little bit of a stiff airflow. The resistance is 0.56. I have it set to 53 watts, 5.4 volts. Just delicious vaporness. It's good. It's really good. In fact, the juice I have in here is a complete mistake, and I liked it so much. That's what's in this unicorn bottle. So uh, in this Chubby Gorilla unicorn bottle is a 50-50 mix of Glacier Banana and Oasis Mist. And this came about because I had a tank going with Glacier Banana, just Glacier Banana, Glacier Banana, Glacier Banana for days. And then the Glacier Banana and the Oasis Mist bottles are, I don't know, similarly colored. Like this one's a darker blue and this one's a lighter blue. So out of the corner of my eye, I grabbed what I thought was Glacier Banana, turned out to be Oasis Mist, and topped off my tank without even looking. And I screwed it all back together and as I'm taking a toot, I look and I see that I just filled this with Oasis Mist and I'm like, oh, damn it. Shit, I'm gonna have to get a new coil head in there and this, that, and the other. Turned out to be like literally the most delicious juice I've ever had. So I've been mixing Oasis Mist and Glacier Banana 50-50 in this unicorn bottle now and filling tanks with it and using drippers with it. It's just freaking delicious. If you're a customer of Epiclouds and you like the Glacier Banana, mix it with some Oasis Mist 50-50. You will not be disappointed. It's so, it's so freaking delicious. It cuts down some of the menthol on the Glacier Banana and adds like a little bit of a tropical sweetness. It's honestly been my go-to juice, but it's not about that. It's about this tank. The flavor on it is really nice. It's easy to fill. I haven't rebuilt it yet. They include like an extra coil head that's pre-wicked, pre-wrapped, and has two leads pointing down at the same exact dimensions. What I'm gonna do before I build is build a coil and I'm gonna clip my leads to the dimensions that they have in their pre-coiled heads so that I can put the two leads down into the holes in the base of the deck and screw in the, the set screws on the side to hold it in place. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna wick it and then uh, we're gonna try to do it. Right now this is using the stock EH Pro 0.5 ohm pre-coiled a build in there. They, it's not a coil head. It's a build. It's like a, a separate build that you have to install yourself. Anyway, I find this tank to be fascinating. And trying to look over on e -Siggity, they have the Bachelor by EH Pro. Oh, it's out of stock. Twenty four bucks. Twenty four ninety nine. And 
you can kind of get an idea of what the deck looks like when you look at it there. It looked like he used, looks like they used really high gauge Niachrome or high gauge Canthal. Like that looks like 22 or 21 gauge on there. But it's been vaping like a champ. I actually have really, really been enjoying this. So, uh, moving forward from there, that's all my first impressions, and like with all my first impressions, what I want to do is uh, spend some more time with that product, and then I will report back later in a weekly review video, either Mod Monday, Topper Tuesday, or Wild Card Wednesday, and uh, do a full review of them, and that's how the first impressions work. Cool? Cool. Anyway, what are we going to do after first impressions? I don't have any retro vaping prepared, so what we're going to do is a review for a thing that never got reviewed. Reviews for things that never got reviews. All right, so reviews for things that never got reviewed. So this is a device that I was sent the version one of um, a long time ago, probably six or so months ago. And it just uh, was not a good device. I wasn't fond of it at all. And I, the creator of the device or the people that sent it to me never really followed up with me. They're just like, hey, we want to send you this. And I was like, okay. I mean, that looks like a thing that I want to try. And it was a parallel uh, aluminum box and it had a horrible, horrible switch on it, right? So horrible that the first toot I took on it, I just set it down and said, no. I am not going to vape that because that button is just horrific. And so they emailed me uh, recently, I mean, within the last like two months, and they said, hey, we know we sent you the original box mod, but we have the version two coming out, and it's the American Muscle Supercharged, right? And they said, um, do you, wanna, you want the version two as well? And I was like, uh, does it have that same button on it? And they're like, no, no, we completely got rid of that button. It's a parallel box now. It's not a se or it's not a, it's a series box now. It's not a parallel box anymore. And it's got a, a new switch. And I think you're really, really gonna like it. And I was like, well, okay. You know what? I'll give you a second chance. Let's try this out. And then so the American Muscle Supercharged arrived, and it's this blue box and it's got a big engine with fire coming out of it and it's got this huge nine volt charger i think i don't know there was no charger included and on the website it doesn't mention anything about what this little port does it looks like a nine volt charger but i have no idea i know that the vape world has some bad experiences with nine volt chargers like the IPv4, I think it was, that were kind of 9-volt chargers and blowing up and tissue paper and stuff like that. So I haven't been using it, needless to say, because I don't have a 9-volt charger. So it uses two 18650s right here in series, one up, one down. These are clear wraps, so nobody panic. And it's got a magnetic door, and there's two big magnets on either side of the door that fit into these two notches. The door snaps on really nice. There's a little bit of play left and right, no play up and down, but a little bit of play left and right in the door. But for the most part, it does snap on there and it snaps on there pretty nice. Now, I got this and I'm looking at it and on one side, there's no button, <laughs> just as a heads up, there's no button on here. And on one side, there's these arrow marks right? They're kind of like, they look like if you were in Mario Kart and you hit them, that you would get a speed boost. You know what I mean? That's what they look like. And so I'm like pressing it and like wobbling it around. And I'm like, I think this is the button. I don't know how this works. So I'm like pressing it. And I'm like, well, maybe mine's dead. Maybe it's like a really short throw mechanical button or something. And mine's dead. No, it's arrows up. So you push this and I'm gonna, let me show you, let me just show you. See the Mario arrows here? So this goes up to fire. You push it up like this to fire. Ready, one more time. You push it up, do you see it going up? You press it up to fire. Interesting, no? So I'm like, wow, that's interesting. And it's a series box, so this is a 0.38 ohm build that Twisted Messes did on the Twisted Messes RDA on a series box hits 
really nice and hard. Really, I mean, it's a series box. That's why it reminds me of the Noisy Cricket. But it reminds me of the Noisy Cricket, the way, the, how hard it hits. Great. Hit nice and hard. And when I first got this, my first vape on it, I was like, wow, series box. Nice. Hitting nice and hard. And this switch, while kind of annoying, isn't completely annoying. Like, you just... It's spring-loaded. You press it up, and when you let go, it snaps back down and stops the firing process. So then the thing happened that made me chuck this mod across my bedroom. I was vaping it and vaping it, and I put my finger on this just a little too low, and I pressed it up, and when I let go, it pinched my skin in between the mod and the button. Just came down, spring-loaded action, right on my skin. And I ripped my finger out of it, and it's red and, like, whoop, whoop, like pulsating. And I went, I got so mad, I just threw it. Just threw it. And I got so mad at the American Muscle. And I'm like, fuck you, American Muscle Supercharged. You suck. Your button sucks. It just pinched my finger. That's something that you shouldn't have to deal with. I don't know why they decided to do it that way. It's a unique design. I get it. It sets you apart, right? You go, oh, there's no button. You don't push it down. You don't push it in. You slide it. It's a little bit of a slider. It's dumb. You could have just easily put like a clicky horn switch right there, and it would have made this mod at least a thousand times better because... The overall machining on it, really nice. It says designed in California. Sure, manufactured obviously in China. The door has a lot of play, but it snaps on and off pretty well. There's no ribbon for your batteries, so getting your batteries in and out, eh, it's a little bit of a struggle, but doesn't pull your battery wraps or tear your battery wraps or anything. And it says, uh, you know, it's clearly labeled on the inside, up and down and up and down, and this is how your batteries go in and they snap in. And this snaps in, and it's all good until you get to this button. I don't even mind the size. It's a little bit tall, but I honestly don't even mind the size. Don't know what this charging thing is for. It's dumb. I don't know what it's there for. And I really, truly, and honestly dislike this button so much that it would keep me from buying this mod. Vape Budget Hands, it's $53.99. It's on Gearspec.com, which... I've heard a lot of negative shit about, um, but I don't know. I mean, I guess it's up to you if you want to shop at Gear Spec. There's a lot of like, look around and see what people have said about Gear Spec, and uh, the reviews for the website itself have not been fantastic. So use this website at your own risk. I personally, with the Noisy Cricket out there and with other better series boxes out there, 53 bucks for the American Muscle Supercharged Combo. This comes with an RDA. I didn't get the RDA, but it comes with an RDA called Da Whale. Da Whale. D-A Whale. Da Whale. And you can only get this in blue. That's it. It doesn't come in black or white or pink or orange. It just comes in silly, silly blue. But you know what? It hits really hard. It's a series box. 53 bucks will get you this and an atomizer. If you can deal with this possibly finger pinching switch then ha huh, you'll be good to go so yeah that's the american muscle supercharged a review for a thing that never got reviewed thumbnails oh my god i just remembered what thumbnails was remember at the beginning of the vlog i said my thumbnails and i didn't know what that meant i just remembered what it meant in case anybody was curious my vlog thumbnails recently changed. Uh, I made a new template. I was using the old template for far too long. And so, pardon me, I decided to use my new, uh, made up a new template, vlog, what's in the news, Robin. And then underneath that, that part always changes on my vlogs. That part is always different, like the bottom half of it. And what I do is I take my camera that I used to shoot my video after I'm done shooting, and I just take a picture of my desk as it looks right when I'm done shooting the vlog. So generally there's like mods and bottles and uh, my beer and possibly my phone and some batteries and a disassembled tank and that's what's in my thumbnails. So in case anybody's wondering, my thumbnails is a picture of my desk right when I get done shooting the vlog. In that exact moment that I'm done, I just 
grab the camera, boop, click a picture, and that's what it uh, that's what it looks like. So that's what thumbnails. I'm so glad I remembered that, and on camera no less. So we've already covered a lot. We did a bunch of first impressions. We drank beer. We talked about advocacy in New Mexico. We talked about vape shaming. We just did a review for things that never got reviewed. What I want to do is wrap up this vlog with uh, mine and everybody's favorite segment of the week. <laughs> so yeah, I got two. I got two of my favorite comments of the week. Um, the amount of comments that I get now is a little bit ridiculous. I really do do my best. I spend hours every single day getting in there, getting in the comments, replying to people who possibly have uh, questions or need clarification on things. Um, but there are a lot of just completely douche-tastic assholes that like to comment all over my vape videos. Um, one of them, this fella Peter right here wrote, uh, I don't remember what video this was on, but Peter wrote and said, Nick, it's not a duel coil if it's only one coil, you fucking idiot. <laughs> and so uh, my response to him was duel spelled correctly. It's not a duel. The coils aren't going to be shooting each other with pistols at dawn. It's not that kind of duel. It's duel as in two. <laughs> dual coil so i know that it's i don't even remember what video this was on he said nick it's not a dual coil if it's only one coil you fucking idiot okay i guess that deserves you know when you know uh i guess that deserves that that i can't even think of the word insult you fucking idiot if someone makes a mistake that's the first thing i say if someone's like is this a dual or single? I'm like, it's only a, it's a dual coil if it's not a single, you fucking idiot. That's what that's what I would say. So, other comment of the week. This was recent. This was actually, uh, this was actually. I saw this one today. Um, Sam wrote. <laughs> I'm gonna edit. Sam, I apologize. I'm gonna edit your last name out of here. Cut. Save. Oh lord, this is a big process. Where's my vape stuffs folder? Where's my vlog folder? Nope, that's the wrong folder. It's in my work in progress folder. Comment of the week number two. Yes. Sam writes in and says, oh, this was on the uh, Aromamizer versus the Griffin uh, tank, which people, obviously, yeah, they, I mean, they got really, really mad at that. Uh, Sam wrote and said, why is bottom filling so damn hard for most of you tards? Damn, all I hear is some pussy whining about shit that means absolutely nothing. Maybe like this comment? Damn, people have become 100% whiny pussies, grow some balls people. <laughs> yes, this is amazing. And this comment works on so many levels because he is obviously a vapor because he knows what bottom filling is. So he says, why is bottom filling so damn hard for most of you tards? So basically, anybody who doesn't like bottom fill tanks is a tard, according to Sam, which you shouldn't say tard. That's not a nice thing to say. Damn, all I hear is some pussy whining about shit that means absolutely nothing. <laughs> so he is accusing me of whining about shit that means absolutely nothing. And then in a comment on that video, he himself is whining about shit that means absolutely nothing. Do you, does anybody see the irony in this? It just, it works on so many levels. Damn people have become 100% whiny pussies, grow some balls people. That is ridiculous. Words of wisdom, uh, words of wisdom from Sam. Thank you. Thank you just uh, so much for that, Sam. So yeah, that's the vlog for now. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Thank you, everybody, for joining me. Um, as always, I have my weekly review videos, Mod Monday, Topper Tuesday, and Wild Card Wednesday. And then I'll see you back here again next week with some more beer and some more vapor for the vlog. And don't forget, you have Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday to post on social media, you watching the vlog, hashtag it Grim Vlog Day, and you can win one of the most sweet ass giveaway boxes that maybe I have ever put together. But that's what I got. Um, 
got a lot of stuff, cool stuff coming up. You know, uh, I say this every time, but it's a lot of mods, tanks, RDAs, stuff like that, because that's what vaping is. As for me, right now, I'm going to grab this. Oh, Axis. I'm going to grab this, and I'm going to vape it, and I'm going to say thank you so much for watching, everybody. And as always, hell yes. Let's keep on vaping.